Hello guys, me again, back with you, and uh, yeah, we've got a glare over here, sorry, let me stand in the way of that, there we are. So, um, here we are back, and back in the garage, and as you can see behind me, I've got the chassis, and yes, I've painted it again. So, um, I've been back and through, looked at the technical data sheet for this paint, and I have a feeling that I may have not put it on thick enough. Uh, they're talking about like a, you know, 111 or 112 micron thickness. Uh, for per coat which is bloody thick for paint so what I've done I've given it another two coats I think uh, so that's basically two and a half litres of paint on that as well about 2.4 litres of paint on that chassis now I've got a tiny little drop left so um, hopefully that's going to be it and I think a lot of the problems I've been having with the rusting I got it in and had a really close look and I think what it is it's like weld spatter or like um, a little edge or something and I haven't got under it so if you can imagine if this is the weld spatter if I spray here this side doesn't get painted so I come along here and I come along here but still there's an area here that's not painted and the water sitting on there because it's been sat outside sitting in there is just starting to corrosion and I haven't seen any rust as such all I'm seeing is this blue staining on the surface of the paint so it looks like it's corrosion starting but um, overall I'm very very impressed with this paint. I've done some chip tests on it uh, with a hammer and a chisel and um, it's actually quite difficult to chip but when it does chip it does chip right off so that is that could be a problem to look out for but the touch up is easy and it does blend very very well so if like on the main area of the chassis I end up with loads and loads of chips and it starts to look, look horrible with rust then um, I can sand that back and then repaint it and at the end of the day, going forward, if it hasn't worked, I've got to bite the bullet and get it galvanised. Um, I haven't got it galvanised this time because of the cost, basically. And also because galvanising is not actually the be all and end all. It doesn't actually stop everything. And I believe on a used chassis, which has already got, you know, some corrosion in it and, and other bits and pieces inside the chassis rails, I've got a feeling it won't sort of be as good as doing it with fresh steel. I'm not sure. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But... Um, the end of the day I mean it's going to be a rebuilt engine, rebuilt gearbox, rebuilt transfer box, rebuilt axles so take the engine and transmission out in one, take the two axles out in one and lift the body off that's it you know it's not really a lot of work um, obviously you've got your bits and pieces ancillaries and stuff but having done it before it should be uh, should be a, a walk in the park doing it a second time and now I've got my hydraulic lift I may be able to conjure up a way of lifting the body off so we shall see anyway so uh, moving forward, I'm going to get this chassis out of you now, get it back outside. I'm going to get some paint on my uh, prop shafts, so I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and I think also we're going to have a look at doing the swivels for the front axle. So I'll uh, see you in a sec. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about again about the, um, the Coralus paint range. The, these paints I'm using, in case you haven't seen before. And, um, and sort of, you know, talk a bit more about them, just, just for a minute or two. But just before we do that, watch this. This was actually a video I put out, if you want to go back and check. I put it out on the 13th of December 2019 uh, and this was all about spraying the primer and this is a snippet from that video. Here's the, the paint I'm using, this is Coralus S, it's a rust inhibitor stabiliser and apparently you can spray this on rusty metal where you've just removed all the scale and the rust will not come back, apparently it continues to work for years. Let's try it. Now what I've done, I've got a piece here piece of scrap steel, it's not a piece of scrap steel, this is actually, <laughs> for anyone who's into their cars, this is actually the front roll cage leg mount off of the Jonathan Palmer Richard Gamble Marcos that I rebuilt many years ago. Um, yeah, this is the, the, the front floor plate off the original, well, it had, had an aluminium roll cage when we bought it, then we put a steel roll cage in it and um, then the, the, the floor plate had to be upgraded, so I actually integrated it into the chassis and didn't actually use this one. But um, yeah, there you go. So that's that's what that is. And I'm going to use this as a test piece. It's It's got surface rust on it, as you can see. So I'm just going to just rub it off. I've degreased it and I'll just give it another quick degrease in case, because I'm now I'm touching it again. There we go. So and I'm going to put this outside in the rain, leave it outside and see how long it lasts. And here we are now, what is it, 25th of March today? 25th of March 2021. So, what's that? 15 months later. And there it is, there's that piece of steel. And this has been out in the garden on the bench. 
for over a year. Now you can see there's a couple of bits of rust coming through on the corners here and that's where I've dropped it or it's blown off the bench. But this has been out in the sun and the wind and the rain and the ice and snow and, and all sorts and you can see when you look at this there's a little bit of rust coming through here but remember it wasn't prepared. I gave it a gentle dry brush in, a dry wire brush in and that was it. I mean it's um it's quite amazing stuff this Coralus paint that was painted directly onto rust. You can see the rust under it there look. Okay so um that's how good this stuff is. As we look over here we can see I've got the um the prop shafts in pieces and all ready for priming. Well primed actually ready for paint and uh, again this is the Coralus S I've masked these back faces here where they go against the um, dry pinions because you don't really want a load of gloss paint in there in that surface because it'll act as kind of a as, as a grease if you like and it will like let me slip. So um, there we go. That's uh, that's that ready to go. So I'll do some painting on them now and then I'll show you when they're painted. Hey guys, it's Saturday and it's cold and has been windy and wet again. So yeah, great. <laughs> um, there's the chassis there all painted again. So that's all done. Oh, that little beauty there and this little beauty here. How lucky am I? Right then, so here where we left off, we were painting these prop shafts. So there we go. So that's the um, nice coat of gloss paint on them. So they're all ready to go. They can go indoors now and finish drying off. Um, nice thing about this RF16 paint is it doesn't smell. It's not, not too bad at all. It's, it's very much like um, house paint, to be honest, like house gloss. So um, it doesn't sort of make you ill or stink your house or give you sore eyes or anything. So. That's a nice thing about it and the thing is it needs the warmth to sort of go off a bit really. So um, there we go. Um, bench is all ready, we've got everything nice and cleaned up and we're going to start working on our swivels on the front in a minute once we get that out of the way. So uh, I'll see you in a sec. On the bench, all ready for reassembly once the paint's gone hard. And I've just done this just for those of you that are thinking, oh my god he's stripped them down and never get them back together the same. They're all coded so I know how everything goes, I know everything that's going to go back in you know the right way round on the right part and with the right UJ except for one which one UJ was a bit stiff so I replaced it so um yeah there we go so um see you soon okay so ready to start putting all this together um just before we do little blue book with the information in there of all the bolt sizes and everything as you can see so um that's worth having um We've also got the indication there about which is left and which is right, you know, the two spots on the one spot and everything. So, um, I've got my box of bearings and everything for the right hand side and all been blown out and washed out and cleaned out, all, all like new. And all the bearings are very good, so I'm not going to replace them. Um, just want to wear something that I don't think ever gets mentioned and I've never seen anywhere else. Um, I learned this from a parts diagram. Um, as we know, there's 14 bolts, seven per side holding these swivels on. There's actually 12 of one and two of another because these bolts are different. They've got a, if you look here, this one has got a bigger shank than this one. And that is actually a dowel bolt. And they go in the uppermost hole here. Okay, where am I? I can't see the camera, where am I? Here we go, the, the uppermost hole here. Now if you look, I should have, I've, I've made a kind of plug gauge, a, a tap with some aluminium tape on it um, but you can see that that is actually a nice like that you can see that is a nice sliding firm fit in there and the others it's like a prick in the top up okay now this is a poor design really from Rover because what they should have done is made one bolt with like a half inch shank or something um, because you can actually bolt this together any old way you like any bolt will fit in any hole okay so there's the, there's the dowel bolt that will actually fit in any hole but the trouble is if you look here you can see that, that dowel bolt when it's in that hole has got a lot more play than when it's in that hole so this is what so obviously this spigot here is giving you your your alignment this bolt is giving you a radial alignment to make sure that your kingpin inclination is all corrected. If not your kingpin inclination, your um, caster is correct and everything. So if you just throw it back together, not knowing about these dowel bolts, you could have, I mean it's going to be a small amount, but it's going to be a very small amount of, um, of error. And um, yeah, that bolt goes in there and it's snug. It's a nice snug fit. When I put it in there, 
you can see it's like a brick in the top hat. And then this is a normal bolt that goes in the doweled hole. It's got play in the normal hole. It's got even more play. So hopefully you've learnt something from there because uh, I certainly did when I was looking at the parts diagrams. And um, yeah, worth um, worth knowing. <laughs> Right, moving forward, so we've got metal post here, I've got the swivel ball attached to the metal post via a big washer and um, a big aluminium washer in there so it didn't damage anything and just a single bolt, so that holds that there so it's nice and easy to work on um, and I'm doing this now so that I don't have to do all this on the axle because doing it now off the axle is a lot more um, is a lot more practical than having, you know, coming. it's better to have it here on the bench in front of you at chest height rather than, you know, on the axle so uh, this is something I picked up from Mike, thank you very much, I think his name is Mike, on um, Trader Fitter's Toolbox. So, thank you for that. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got our upper bearing all cleaned out, we've got our lower bearing there all cleaned out. I've got my bolts here which have all been wire brushed, de-rusted and then um, sprayed silver just because I'm a tart like that. And I've got some oil just to lightly lubricate them. And the idea here is to build them up with the shims. I won't be using the gaskets at the moment because this is just a dry build. So build them up with the original shims that came out and maybe add an extra one because it seems that every single bearing preload on my Land Rover is tight. Um, and if you remember when I took these apart they were they were sort of very jerky. I'm looking at the bearings, they're absolutely perfect so I can only think that everything was all overloaded. So um, I'm going to get this together. The first thing to do is take this bearing off of here and then bolt it into the, the bottom of the swivel housing. Okay, now everything's marked. So I've got a couple of spots there, so it's, it's all marked so I know where it's, everything's going facing outwards and everything. And on this one, uh, I've got the marks on the outside, but also I made a note. You've got on here, I could just show you, you've got a couple of letters and I made a note that the letter A points outwards. So uh, it doesn't really matter because it's a, a circular item, but um, it's best to put everything back as it was. And don't forget there's an O-ring on here as well when it's finally assembled. So um, let's go and get that bolted in. And then I'll come back and get the camera a bit closer to the swivel and we'll look at getting it shimmed. Right, so I've got the camera as good as I can get out so I could do a bit a bit higher, but never mind. I'm sure you've all seen this before, but people have said they want to see everything, so I'll show you everything. So I've got my, my smaller bearing here. We've got the um, the pivot in there for the um, for the lower swivel. So I'm just going to very lightly roll this bearing, and I mean very lightly. Um, it's, as I said, it's all been washed and blown out and everything. So that's, actually I'll give that a little bit of a spin round because it's not, it's not going to be exactly doing 360 in there, is it? So we can now take this spindle and put this up under here. And that will just sit there and hang on the top like that. Then I've got my upper swivel. So we've got the bearing, which you have to put in first. Well done, Nigel. So, light lubrication on there. And just pull this away, drop that down there and go back on the top again. There we go. Just like that. And get the oil off my fingers. I don't want to get oil over from shiny new paint <laughs> because I'm a tart. So uh, that's going to go like that. And then we got some shims. So I've got here the shims that came off of it. So I'm going to put them in and see where we go. Let's get this, uh, let's get this cable tie removed. So I have cleaned all these off. They do tend to rust. Um, so I have actually given them all a clean off with some Scotch Brite. So we can put them on onto there. I've got some dummy bolts. Put those through there. Just like so. Drop this in with the marks pointing outwards as I said earlier. And now that's going to sit in that bore nice and square. I do not like wearing gloves. 
trouble is I have to try and keep my fingernails clean because of the uh, modelling work I do. Not modelling as in modelling myself, as in making models on my other channel. And uh, it's not very nice for me to have to look at my horrible bitten nails all full of oil. Right, so that's pulling together nicely now. And it is quite loose. And I can feel some friction there now. And it's probably about right now. They need to be torqued up to check properly. So I've got my torque wrench set at 65 newton meters, which is equivalent to 48 pounds feet. Now when this is finally assembled we'd have to fit the o-ring in here, we'd have to fit the bracket on the top for the brake pipe and we'd have to put thread lock on. So God blame me I can't get enough leverage on that so I'll have to just do it as tight as I can hope for the best. Yeah that's locked up pretty but it's not locked up solid but that's way too tight so um, what we'll do now is we will undo this and add a shim. So that just goes to show you, look, I've got the same shims in there that were in there when I stripped it down in the same location with the same bearings on the same swivel with the same hub and you can see how tight that was. So, you know, it's um, it's quite ridiculous really. That's, that, I think that was what was causing me this, this rough feeling when I originally had it. So. I've bought a couple of extra shims, but all I did was bought two wow. more 3,000 shims. So I've got a brand new 3,000 shim here. And we'll just see if it's enough. So I'll drop that down in there again. Hopefully it'll go together a bit easier this time. So I've never done this before. This is the I've, I've built a, a Jeep, a Willys Jeep or four GPW axles, and they're very similar. The only trouble with them is they actually have the the steering arm is on here, so all of the steering effort is put through. There's four three eight studs in here, and they've actually got um. A couple of those are doweled, and not, not a lot of people know that, the same as I was talking about with the swivel bolts. And um, yeah, it's quite important that you actually use the doweled bolts because otherwise, when you use the steering, the um, everything just comes undone. Right, so that's nipped down, and I can feel that's got a bit of resistance. So let's get some uh, let's get some torque into it and see how it responds. That's as tight as I can get it. I think that is too tight still. I'm going to go and get my scales and measure the uh, measure the force. As you all know, I like to give away my little tips as I find them and stuff. And uh, something I've just discovered, which is um, quite cool, is you see all these three bolts in here. They're basically put in there to stand it up onto paint. And I've just realised that inside here, if I bring the camera up, I should be able to show you. But inside here, tripod's good in my legs. Inside here, this bolt is going up against the the side here of the actual I take that away of the actual um, swivel itself so if you do that bolt up so it's against the swivel you can then come along <coughs> try put down in the proper place you can then come along with your torque wrench set at 65 newton meters with that bolt up against there and you can torque it up so handy little tip for anybody who's doing this. It doesn't damage it at all because it's as hard as nails, the swivel, and it's an area that's not contacted by anything. So even if it does put a little mark on it, it doesn't matter. 
But um, yeah, I thought, I thought it was a great idea. I just found it by accident, purely because I got these three bolts in here just to stand it on for painting. So uh, there we go. So what I've done here, I've actually removed one of the uh, 3,000 shims and I've replaced that one with a 6,000 shim. So originally I had uh, two 10,000, one 6 and one 3, which is what the Land Rover was built with. What's quite interesting is both sides are exactly the same. They've both got the two 10s, the one 6 and the one 3. So that's very interesting. Um, so what I've done is basically added another 3,000 and that was still too tight. So I've taken away 3,000 and put 6,000 in. So now we're on um, plus 6,000 over what it was originally. And it's still too tight. I've got my scales here, which are basically for weighing suitcases. You can get these things on eBay for literally nothing. They're two pound or something stupid. And they're really, really good. They've got a digital, digital um, scale on it. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I need to get that bolt out of the way so I can increase my stroke. Because we all like to increase our stroke, don't we? And um, what we need to do is overcome the initial... As you can see, initially it'll go up. And then as it moves, there we go, as it moves, you'll see the it will drop off. So it's way too tight, it's four or five kilos and it should be between 1.1 and 1.5 roughly. So um, I'm going to take it all apart again, add another shim and see where we go from there. Okay, so I've got a uh, three tens and a six in there now, so that's 36 thou. I started off talking metric. I'm going to just carry on with thou because it's so much easier. It's not six thou. I keep thinking it's six thou. It's five thou. So thirty-five thou in there. So I can um, torque these bolts up now. There we go. And this one. There we go. They're torqued up. And then back that bolt off so we've got a bit more swing in room. God, I still feel stiff. So I'm like seven thou more now than it was to start with. What do we have to start with? 10, 10, 10, 5 and 3. So we had um, 28 and now we've got 35. So we've got 7,000 more than we had in there from the factory. And also I've got a layer of paint on there. So I know it's going to be a couple of microns, but... Right, so let's see how much force it takes. Let's just check you can see the... Yeah, you can see the gauge. So we've got to ignore the over, what we overcome. So it's about 2.3, 2.5 kilos. So I would be tempted to leave it like that because I'd rather have a little bit too tight and a little bit too loose. But I don't like the feel of that. It still feels kind of draggy and lumpy. You know, it makes me think, you know, that, what's the names? The people, they've got that Keswick Green um, 110 and they go all around the world with it. And they had their front swivel um, fail, didn't they? Actually split open on the bearing. It's hardly surprising if they're loading them up like that from the factory. It's hardly surprising. But, um, anyway, so the other thing I've discovered is another little trick for undoing them. Put a piece of wood in there. And then when you undo it, you're not actually... Ugh, you're not going to actually damage anything. Now undo these bolts just like so. Seems like every video I do, there's always shimming of bearings or something involved. I want to get on with that chassis as well. We'll look at getting that chassis uh, wax oil, guys, and um, start getting it back together. Nip these up. It feels still feels a bit too tight if you ask me, but uh, let's get them torqued. This 65 newton meters is a pain in the ass for me because I've got this torque wrench is 60. Was it 60 to um, 60 to 300? And the other one is like 8 to 60. So 
I've got this kind of area around 60 that I don't like using because it's right at the bottom of one and right at the top of the other. So let's just uh, do that bottom a bit more so it's square on and then we can torque them up. Get this bloody glove stuck. There we go. Jess is stood directly underneath the tripod at the moment so if the camera moves you know why. Well, that feels better. Let's uh, back this bolt off. That feels a lot better. Let's see what sort of drag we've got on there now. It feels like it might be too tight. Okay, so we'll overcome the initial movement and then we'll see. It's got like an easy spot. It kind of goes easy there. And then it gets stiff again here. So I don't understand that because the, they're taper bearings. They shouldn't have a, a tight and loose spot. But I'm going to, because this is, the, this is the actual way you're using it here. So I'm going to take the load at this point here. And that is only about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 kilos. Let's bring the camera around so you can see. It's only about 0 0.6 kilos, so not enough. So I'm going to take a shim out. So what I'll do is take take the three out and the five out. So that's going to be removing eight, and then I'll put another three in and another three in, so that'll be replacing six. So we're going to come down two thou. God. Right. So <laughs> here we go. This is about half an hour later now. So I ended up with taking a five out and putting a three in and it was too tight. So sorry, sorry, it was too loose. So what I've got now is um, three tens and a five. So I've got 35 thou according to the shim packs. Um, so basically we're at about seven or eight thou thicker. And what we've got now is, I think it's about right. Just wait for the hello to go away. Um, remember the maximum we should have is 1.46. So I'm sort of happy with that. It's kind of in the middle of the travel. It's it's about right. So I'm happy with that. So we'll consider that side done. So I'm going to write the number on there and then um, and then I'll have to use the same shims to do the other side because I don't have enough shims now. I've used shims from the other side. So um, I'll go on and get the other side done. And I think for that video we'll call it a day. So uh, we've looked at that and the next video, um, well maybe not the next video, but in one of the videos upcoming we need to show you how the um, prop shafts go back together. Uh, for those that haven't already seen it. And, um, and move on from there. We also need to get some work done on the chassis, don't we? And then things are going to start to move really fast because basically what I've got now is pretty much a kit of painted, um, cleaned, refurbished parts ready to bolt back together. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon with another one. Bye for now. Bye.